Agriculture was beginning to prosper. The National Road was inching its way westward across the state. Canals were opening up trade routes between Lake Erie and the Ohio River. An industrial revolution was underway, and Ohio was about to enter a new era. From the beginning, people were attracted to Ohio by its plentiful resources. Nature had endowed the state with an abundance of riches. But still, there was much to be learned about this land. Questions which remained unanswered. How extensive was this natural wealth? What lay below the Earth's surface? Were there undiscovered treasures that would make Ohio even more prosperous? What did the future hold? And what of the past? Among the people asking these questions was Robert Lucas, 12th governor of the state. Lucas proposed to find out more. And in 1835, he recommended the establishment of an Ohio Geological Survey. A committee headed by Dr. Samuel Hildreth of Marietta was appointed to look into the matter. Hildreth was one of the best informed men in Ohio on geology and natural resources. And after reviewing his committee's plan, the state legislature made the survey a reality in March 1837. The search was underway. Selected to head up the enterprise was Dr. William W. Mather, a 33-year-old New Yorker who had led his classes at West Point in chemistry and mineralogy. Four geologic assistants and a topographic engineer were assigned to help him. Their work was undertaken in a new area with little information to guide them in their investigations. But their labors resulted in the publication of two slim but important volumes, the basis for future geologic work in Ohio. But soon the work was brought to an abrupt halt with the country gripped by financial panic government expenditures were cut back, and for 30 years, research on the state's geology was largely ignored. What new information was gained was monopolized by those who paid for it. Every financial agent of the state took pains to gather information about Ohio's geology, and all deplored the fact that information was so meager. It wasn't until 1869 that research began anew with the distinguished J.S. Newberry as chief geologist. Under Newberry, the geological survey turned out a number of valuable reports. These included the first official geologic map of the state and a number of plates detailing many of the fossils which held the key to Ohio's geologic past. But this survey lasted only three years. And again, geologic research continued to be intermittent until a third survey was organized in 1889 by Dr. Edward Orton. Orton, who had assisted in previous work, was the first president of Ohio State University and also its first professor of geology. Under his guidance, the survey's research was put on a more continuous basis. The detective work began in earnest, and gradually the clues began to fall into place. What these early geologists and those who followed them uncovered was a picture of Ohio's ancient past, a picture which could also serve as a blueprint for the future. Hundreds of millions of years ago, 
a vast inland sea covered the land that would one day become Ohio. The life-giving sun pumped its energy into the waters, and life flourished, multiplied, and died, becoming entombed in the slow but incessant rain of sediment that would one day form the rocks of Ohio. In time, the great sea withdrew, leaving behind vast, lush swamps. New forms of life emerged, only to die and become buried in the murky, plant-choked waters. Delicate ferns, great trees, all fell into the waters to become compressed and altered into the rock we call coal. The coal swamps, as had the seas before them, eventually faded as the land began to rise ever so slowly. Great rivers meandered across the landscape and sprawling reptiles roamed the vast floodplains. As the mighty Appalachians began their last slow rise, Ohio entered an obscure period for which there is no record in the rocks of the state. A lost interval of 160 million years when dinosaurs ruled the earth only to vanish and be replaced by the mammals. Erosion, the great leveler, was stripping away rocks left behind by the seas and swamps, carving the landscape ever closer to its present form. After the passage of 200 million years, the balance of the seasons began to change. The Earth's climate grew cooler. The grip of winter gradually tightened till much of the land lay buried beneath ice and snow. Shaggy, elephant-like mammoths and mastodons roamed the spruce forests. Great glaciers moved slowly southward, covering two-thirds of Ohio with ice up to a mile thick. Rock was scraped, gouged, and smoothed by the ice. Many old valleys were filled, and the landscape was blanketed by glacial debris. Our modern river system established, Lake Erie created, there lay revealed the Ohio we know so well. Ohioans are closely linked to the geology of their state, though few realize the magnitude of this relationship. It affects where we live and how we live. Much of Ohio's prosperity is due to the abundant mineral resources in the state. Mineral resources which have drawn men to Ohio from the very beginning. The story of perhaps Ohio's earliest mineral industry begins here at Flint Ridge State Memorial in Licking County. For more than 10,000 years, ancient Indian tribes journeyed to this area to quarry flint for tools and weapons. It was highly valued, and trails led into Flint Ridge from every direction. Specimens from the area have been discovered on the Atlantic coast, in Louisiana, and as far west as Kansas City. Flint was also of vital importance to early Ohio settlers who used it for starting fires and in flintlock guns. In 1965, Flint's long and valuable service to the state was recognized when the rock was chosen Ohio's official gemstone. And today, Ohio Flint provides the raw material for colorful and beautiful jewelry. 
The Ohio Geological Survey played an important role in the exploration of Ohio's mineral resources, and the state's mineral industries developed rapidly in the early 1800s. One of the principal products was iron. Numerous charcoal iron furnaces sprang up in the state, primarily in the southern Ohio area known as the Hanging Rock District, once one of the great iron-producing centers of the United States. All the necessary materials for making iron were found in Ohio, and the forges and furnaces turned out a variety of products for a growing civilization, from household products, to machinery, to instruments of war. One of the more notable products of Ohio's iron industry was the ironclad ship, the Monitor, which made naval history during the war between the states. Soon after the Civil War, Ohio became the leading iron-producing state in the nation. Because the state's iron ores were of relatively low quality, the introduction of rich Lake Superior iron ores spelled the end of the Hanging Rock era. And by 1890, many of the old furnaces were in ruins. Remnants of these furnaces are still evident, and in Jackson County, the famed Buckeye Furnace has been restored as a state memorial marking a significant period in the development of the state. Although Ohio is no longer a source of iron ore, its early start in the iron industry has enabled it to remain a leader in the production of iron and steel. Ohio has long held an important position in the ceramic and clay products industry, primarily because vast deposits of clay and shale the basic ingredients for ceramic products are widely distributed in the state. Early recognition of the value of these deposits by the Geological Survey and other researchers helped to establish a major ceramic industry. And former state geologist Edward Orton, Jr. is considered the founder of the science of ceramic engineering in America. Ohio was blessed not only with good clays, but the state's early settlers included many highly skilled workers who turned out a variety of products for the growing young country. Brick making came to Ohio in 1788 with the building of Campus Martius at the state's first permanent settlement in Marietta and has continued without interruption to the present. and sanitation in America's rapidly growing urban areas gave birth to the sewer pipe industry, which originated in Ohio in 1851. Since that time, Ohio has remained in the lead, both in the quality and quantity of output. Another mineral industry which got off to an early start in Ohio was the production of salt. Even before the state had been settled, its salt licks were well known. The most noteworthy was the Scioto Saline in what is now Jackson County. For many years, this area was a peace zone for Indian tribes who considered a salt spring a gift of the gods. The first white men to visit the Scioto Salt Licks were Indian prisoners, and when they escaped, they quickly told others of this remarkable find, for few things were as precious to frontier man as salt. In fact, one of the first laws passed by the legislature in 1803 was aimed at regulating Ohio's salt industry. New and better sources of salt have been found in the state over the years. And in 1889, rock salt was discovered under the city of Cleveland. Today, Ohio is one of the largest salt-producing states in the nation. Ohio's underground salt production comes from two mines in the northeastern part of the state, where the mining is done entirely beneath Lake Erie, 
more than one mile offshore. Here, in this subterranean labyrinth, 2,000 feet below the surface, many tons of salt are extracted daily. Blasted from the walls of the mine, the salt is scooped up by 16-ton end loaders, then crushed and moved by conveyor to storage areas to await shipment to customers. Surprisingly, common table salt accounts for an extremely small quantity of the salt used. The major portion of Ohio's salt is shipped to huge barns like this one, where it's stored for use in snow and ice control. Chemical industries also use large quantities of salt each year, produced by a different method known as brining. The state's salt deposits, formed by the evaporation of Silurian seas more than 400 million years ago, are so extensive that it's estimated that at the present rate of consumption, Ohio could furnish the nation's salt supply for 32,000 years. In man's search for salt, he's often come upon some other valuable mineral resources. Many early settlers encountered oil and gas while drilling for brine. This old log is all that remains of one of the first such wells, drilled in 1814 in Noble County. It was not, however, until 1860 that the commercial development of oil began in Ohio. But some decades later, oil production was booming, and for eight years, from 1895 to 1902, Ohio produced more oil than any other state. Ohio's natural gas industry also experienced a boom in the late 19th century, but with some unfortunate side effects. In the mid-1880s, the discovery of large reservoirs of natural gas near Findlay spread excitement throughout the area. The gas was thought to be inexhaustible, and gas torches and streetlights burned night and day. As sightseers came from miles around, wells were set on fire to prove there was no end to the bounty. Offers of free gas brought new industries, Finley's population skyrocketed, and the residents felt the area was on its way to becoming the industrial center of the Midwest. But there was an end to the bounty, and it came quickly. Despite feverish drilling, the boom collapsed and Findlay was faced with a gas shortage. Writing about the incident in 1890, state geologist Edward Orton made these observations. If the wasteful policy that is now so largely in force should be maintained, there is sure to be, in at no very distant day, great disappointment and reaction. Natural gas is merely a transient phase of the stored power of the Earth. It is folly to talk of its taking anything like a permanent place in the work of the world. Today, the drills of Ohio's oil and gas industry are continually probing the rocks buried deep beneath the surface, searching for energy trapped hundreds of millions of years ago in the bodies of tiny plants and animals that lived in ancient seas. Ohio's oil and gas reserves are relatively modest, yet they provide a critical supplement to the dwindling supplies available to the state's industries and consumers. Ohio's most valuable mineral resource, coal, is the foundation upon which most of the state's industry and wealth have been built. From the time of the earliest settlements to the present day, Despite cultural and industrial changes, coal has played an increasingly vital role in maintaining our high standard of living. Coal began to be mined in significant amounts in Ohio in the late 19th century. It was cut from the mine walls by men with picks and hauled out by whatever means were available, men, mules, and even dogs. Prior to World War II, underground mining was the principal method of removing coal. But during the war, strip mining became more common. 
and today it's the most frequently used method. Some of the largest surface mining equipment in the world can be found working the hills of eastern and southern Ohio. seams lie too deep, even for the giant stripping shovels, underground mining is used. The increasing costs of strip mining, coupled with greater demands for coal, are now tipping the scales back to underground mining. Geological reports and maps published by the Ohio Geological Survey provide important background information for the mining industry in the exploration and development of Ohio's coal resources. Ohio is one of the nation's largest coal-producing states, and its coal reserves are sufficient to last until alternative energy sources can be developed. Although mined in less significant quantities, a number of other mineral resources, such as gypsum, also play an important role in the state's economy. Gypsum deposits occur throughout the world, but the most valuable are those which, like Ohio's, lie within important economic regions. The major deposits of value in Ohio are found in Ottawa County near Sandusky Bay, where gypsum has been quarried since 1822. Gypsum is widely used in the production of wallboard, lath, and gypsum plaster. And as our construction activities increase, so will the consumption of this versatile mineral. Ohio is a national leader in the production of limestone and dolomite, much of which comes from surface quarries in the western half of the state. This extensive area of thick limestones near the surface guarantees that the reserves of this mineral resource are large enough to supply our needs for hundreds of years. Millions of tons of limestone and dolomite are quarried each year in Ohio. These versatile rocks are processed into literally hundreds of products for use in agriculture, ceramics, steelmaking, lime, cement, and a host of other industries. Ohio's building stones have played a prominent part in the development of the state. And the contributions of sandstone to Ohio's early growth are evident everywhere. Sandstone is quarried from huge canyon-like pits, which have produced stone for major buildings, bridges, and other structures which have stood the test of time. Ohio is one of the nation's leading sandstone producers, and although the use of sandstone has fallen off in the construction industry, new uses are constantly being found for this valuable mineral resource. Small but significant quantities of high-purity sand and silica flour are used in the glass and pottery industries. Sandstone is widely used as a decorative stone and its durability makes it valuable for laboratory use. One of the reasons that sandstone's use in the construction industry has declined has been the increased use of concrete. But this has given new importance to Ohio's sand and gravel resources, which provide much of the aggregate raw materials for the construction industry. Ohio is one of the nation's leading producers of sand and gravel, but few realize the importance of these deposits to the economy. Left behind by the melting ice of the great glaciers, sand and gravel deposits are widely distributed across the state, making the commodities both abundant and inexpensive. But our supplies are being threatened. Other uses are being found for the land underlain by these deposits. And today, the development of our sand and gravel resources is becoming a major problem. And so, the search continues. And so do the questions. How shall we best use the land to provide maximum benefits to our people, both economically and environmentally? Sound answers are possible only with adequate data. 
A major portion of the scientific research needed to provide these answers is being undertaken by the Ohio Geological Survey, today a division of the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Its scientists are continually at work gathering new information and updating old information. Information which comes from many sources, private industry, other governmental agencies, but most importantly, from the survey's own geologists. The research covers a broad spectrum of subjects with far-reaching implications for the future. For example, survey geologists are tackling the age-old problem of erosion on Ohio's Lake Erie shoreline. Erosion which threatens the economic well-being of thousands of lakeshore residents and which claims untold acres of valuable, irreplaceable land each year. Operating a 46-foot research boat from Sandusky, survey scientists collect data on a variety of geologic problems confronting the lakeshore region. With this information, the Geological Survey is able to assist hundreds of citizens and governmental and industry people every year with problems relating to erosion, development, mineral production, or planning. Geologic hazards, such as landslides, pose another threat to the well-being of Ohio's citizens. Improperly located homes, businesses, and highways can result in millions of dollars worth of property damage and untold human anguish. Information developed by survey geologists is being used to prevent future problems. A large volume of data is collected by field geologists who travel throughout the state, gathering information from a wide variety of sources. The measurements, observations, and samples taken at rock outcrops provide valuable information for a large number of geologic studies. Here, a coal company makes a core test to help determine future mining possibilities, and a survey geologist carefully notes the types of rocks found in the core samples extracted from the earth. With this data, the geologist can aid the coal company or private citizens with exploration problems. Such information is also invaluable in estimating statewide coal reserves used in predicting potential development areas, as well as for planning a national energy policy. At this strip mine site, geologists explore the exposed rock to find unweathered and uncontaminated samples necessary for chemical studies. These field samples are then taken to the survey's modern geochemical laboratories, where scientists employ a battery of sophisticated equipment to unlock even more of the Earth's secrets. For example, determination of the sulfur concentration in coal is useful in reducing air pollution. Other chemical elements are important to the future gasification or liquefaction of our coals. The chemical and physical aspects of clays, limestones, sandstones, and other Ohio resources are equally important to their future utilization. As a result of its own research, as well as data collected from other sources, the files of the Geological Survey are the major source of mineral resource and geologic information for industry, government, and private citizens. Much of this information is put into the form of publications covering a wide variety of geologic subjects. Interested citizens can obtain such things as technical and semi-technical reports, field trip guidebooks, educational leaflets, information on mineral resources, and reports on the geology of individual counties. In addition, the survey also distributes topographic and other types of maps covering the entire state. Over 100,000 maps, reports, and items of technical data are distributed to Ohioans each year. A figure which attests to the great interest in Ohio's geology and the wisdom of the explorations that began nearly a century and a half ago. The search will never end because our society is constantly changing. There will always be new needs.
new priorities, and new questions. And the search for the answers must continue.